Uh, Joe Biden, of course, has been uh, right in the centre of the storm for quite a little while now. There he is. Uh, he's having a nice little rest on the beach, and uh, you wouldn't know he was the man in charge of pretty much everything, would you? Uh, any news, Joe? Uh, we were trying to tell him earlier that uh, Ukraine have now invaded Russia. Uh, he doesn't seem too bothered. Uh, never mind. Maddie Hale's here. Uh, morning. <laughs> you reach out to him yourself, Mike. We did, yeah. We were trying to get hold of him. But he's on the beach. You know, he's not really interested. He loves a holiday. You he have does. to know this. He does love a holiday. Who can blame him? Because, uh, I mean, over in the US at the moment, it's all kicking off, isn't it? We've got a little clip for you, actually, uh, from CNN. Uh, this is J.D. Vance talking about uh, Kamala Harris being oh, a God. fake. Have a look. I believe that Kamala Harris is whatever she says she is, but I believe importantly that President Trump is right that she is a chameleon. She pretends to be one thing in front of one audience, she pretends to be something different in front of another audience. Look, Dana, she's not running a political campaign, she's running a movie. She only speaks to voters behind a teleprompter. Everything is scripted. She doesn't have her policy positions out there. She hasn't answered why she wanted to ban fracking, but now she doesn't. She wanted to fund police, but now she doesn't. She wanted to open the border, but now she doesn't. She should have to answer for why she presents a different set of policies to one audience and a different set of policies to another audience. And I think that's what President Trump is getting at. This is a fundamentally fake person. She's different depending on who she's in front of. Wait. There you are, wow. um, J.D. Vance. It, there are going to be some uh, interesting debates coming up in September. Yeah, they will be interesting, and we're very much in need of it. I mean, J.D. Vance, he does make a point in the sense that Kamala Harris has actually not done any press conferences. No, She's done, like, a stop-by to right. reporters waiting for her, but nothing really, and you kind of... Look, I think the I think the Biden administration did themselves a disservice when they waited, mm. you know, a week for Biden to a address right. Americans and say why he was stepping aside. That didn't involve any questions from reporter right. reporters, and then Kamala Harris does the same thing where she's not taking any questions from reporters. Mm. And I just think it feeds into that narrative that Republicans aren't. I mean, that Democrats are not transparent. No. And that's the problem they've got. Mm. But we'll come back to that, I'm sure, in the weeks to come. Today we want to talk to you about Rachel Gunn, or Ray Gunn, Ray as she's Gunn. known. Um, <laughs> now, I've seen some breakdancing in my time, right? Well, I haven't ever done, it, done it. No, I haven't done it. I'm not that flexible. But, I mean, I used to watch breakdancers in uh, New York and Central Park, and they were great at it. You yeah. know, they were doing some incredible things. She's taken a lot of uh, flack because she did, amongst other things, this kind of kangaroo <laughs> thing, right? I don't know what that was about. Um, but she was useless, wasn't she? Yeah. I mean, I mean this is the first on. time breakdancing has been in the Olympics. Yeah, the hopefully the last time. The standards were high. Look, I think she's spoken about it since um, mm. to News Corp in Australia yeah. about how she, you know, she's 36, she's probably one of the older contestants. Right. She was definitely our best bet uh, out of the female breakdancers and she wanted to put a bit more creativity um, than actual skill yes. in there because she was a little bit older and right. she knew that she wasn't as good as her competitors. But I have to say, Mike, this is just fed into Australian humour. Like, yeah. this this is the creme de la creme of what we love. Mm. She has... I mean, everyone's taking the piss out of her. I feel... Right. You know, I feel horrible because she's still an Olympian. Well, yeah, well, is she, though? I mean, she shouldn't really be an Olympian at that I point. I mean, we'll take she? anything we can get. Right. So, um, as, you, as you probably know that we did... Well, oh, sorry. It's breakfast, of course. People have people course. taking their children to school. Sorry, I didn't know that was a swear word. Yeah, there it is. Anyway, the point is, is that, you know, she's not really... This is what people are saying. It's not really Olympian to, no. to, to do that. One, it's only been in for one, one, one showing so yeah. far. And it's just not exactly, it's not excellence really, is it? No. And, you know, there's obviously moves that she did that I would never be able to do or right. the average person wouldn't be right. able to do. But it, mostly it was kind of just an, looked like an unscripted dance routine that... Well, everyone here is, is, is saying it looked like David Brent. You know, it looked like The Office. And oh, Vibes, yeah, of course. And then everyone at home to, is yeah. relating it to Summer Heights High, okay. which is popular here. It's Chris Lilly's comedy series. And right. one of the characters, Jonah Takalua, is, says he's the best break dancer in, in year eight. Right. And every scene is him break dancing in the schoolyard. And so all the memes in Australia are related to that. Okay. Who even won the break dancing? Because I didn't really check. I think someone, a, J a Japanese woman. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. How, how did Australia do generally then? Uh, we beat you, Mike. Did we you? came fourth. Okay. So I'm quite, I'm quite ecstatic with that. I don't really care about the Olympics, but do you, you not, know, not particularly. Did you not get patriotic at all? Not really. I think it was one of the first times I've been incredibly patriotic. I mean, I'm very, I'm very pleased that Team GB did as well as they did, but I yeah. mean, it's been a very strange Olympics for all sorts of reasons. Mm. And the opening ceremony was bizarre. The closing ceremony was equally bizarre. 
uh, plus Tom Cruise, um, plus the boxing, you know, yeah, the, and yeah. all of that. There was just an awful lot of stories which had more to do with controversy than had to do with sport. I think it's kind of one of those things where it's 2024 and we're always going to... They're always going to kind of feed into that wokeness that we expect them to. Yeah. I didn't expect it to be that. Especially the boxing, I didn't expect yeah. it to be that controversial yeah. and to have kept going. Yes, and, and that's I, the point. But and I don't are. see that dying down soon. No, I don't either. No. But let's try and ban the breakdancing from the <laughs> LA Olympics, which is the next one four years from now. I might, um, I might get myself in there. You may well do. Maddie, thank you very much. <laughs> you can do any worse than Ray Gun.